upgrades to HS2 are being considered, among other options, to curb rising costs. That's according to the boss of the project. The planned high-speed railway, which will link London, the Midlands and north of England, has long been plagued by cost increases and delays. One estimate has previously said the final price tag could exceed £100 billion. The government said work was well underway to bring transformational benefits for generations to come. Veteran Radio 2 presenter Kent Bruce will host his final mid-morning show today after 31 years. Broadcaster, best known for his daily Popmaster quiz, announced in January he'd be leaving Radio 2 to go to the commercial station Greatest Hits Radio. He'll be replaced by a presenter, Vernon Kay. Ken was supposed to present his last show at the end of March. His leaving date was brought forward to today. It's entirely within uh, the BBC's right to... Uh to ask me to uh, step away a little early. Um, gardening leave is a known concept in broadcasting uh, and in many other areas. Uh, but for the sake of 17 days, which was all that was remaining, I would have finished on the 24th anyway. So uh, uh, it seems a shame, but uh, you know, you just adapt your timetable. Instead of uh, three weeks, uh, it's one week and that's, that's been fine. And all the best to Ken, absolute legend of the airwaves as he continues his work. Absolutely. 13 minutes past eight. Matt, how's it looking weather-wise? Gorgeous view for some this morning, Chai. Good morning. This is the view in Devon a short while ago. Notice, though, a good frost on the ground here. We've seen clear skies through the night. It is a frosty morning. Thing is, for most of you, it was cloud that dominated overnight, so frost-free, and it's cloud which will dominate through much of today. The vast majority of you get through with a dry day, but we do have some damp weather already. We've had some rain or drizzle so far this morning, some Scotland far north of England, but chiefly Northern Ireland, where the dampest conditions remain. The uh, rain or drizzle continue here all the way through the day, but should ease off a little bit. There will be some patchy light rain or drizzle in uh, England from this cloud that's uh, going to be moving its way westward, so not as much sunshine in the south as some saw yesterday, and clouding over a little bit in the sunny bits of West Wales, Devon and Cornwall. A few more breaks appearing in the cloud in Scotland, eastern England, compared with what we've had so far this morning but at least once you've got that sunshine if you've got it it will feel quite pleasant the winds are light the sun is getting stronger but really with most of you under grey skies it will be another chilly day seven to nine degrees the highs now this evening and overnight not a huge amount will change to begin with plenty of cloud odd spot of rain or drizzle maybe a few more breaks developing later in the night across scotland northern england especially and this is where most prone to see some uh, frost to take us into tomorrow morning but showers edge into the north and east of scotland uh, through the latter stage of the night and through this weekend they will gradually become a little bit more dominant still many of you will spend the bulk of the weekend dry but it will start to turn chillier and even colder still charlie as we go into next week matt thanks very much so stomach churning images of raw sewage being pumped directly into the sea were widely shared on social media last year raising fresh questions about the quality of our rivers and our waterways. So let's take you through some of the figures. Currently, only 14% of England's rivers are classified as having a good ecological status. That's according to the Environment Agency. But it says that figure is predicted to drop to just 6% by 2027. Now, raw sewage discharge is one of the main contributors to poor water quality. Just one year, England and Wales waterways had sewage pumped into them for at least 3.4 million hours. Yorkshire was one of the worst counties for polluted waterways, with three of its rivers, it's the Calder, the Air, and the Ouse, falling within the top ten. And meanwhile, sewage was discharged into the River Seven more than 2,500 times in just one year. Our environment correspondent Jonah Fisher has been to meet people living nearby. 5.6 degrees. 5.6 degrees. Yeah, it's quite warm. Cleaning up our waterways is going to take courage and conviction. And Melissa and Alison have it in spades. You're there with your friends, but again, it's quite solitary. Oh, it's just lovely. It's a freedom. You're part of the nature. Yeah, I love it. But unfortunately, it's not just nature in the River Severn. It gets whiffy at the river, just up the river there. The UK's longest river is, like many of our waterways, in trouble. Farming runoff, industrial waste and sewage have all played their part in making swimming not for the faint-hearted. In the edges you tend to get sanitary products and toilet paper, that kind of thing. Wet wipes. And it's a different colour as well. 
the water. Yeah, yeah, it's horrible. It looks like slurry, it's not nice. But just how polluted the Severn is, is hard to quantify. In recent years, there have been great efforts made to measure the amount of sewage that flows into our rivers. But that data has its limits. Here on the Severn, we know that sewage mixed with rainwater flowed out of outflow pipes like that one over there for a combined total of nearly 29,000 hours in 2021. What we don't know is whether it was dribbling out or a raging torrent. And if you've ever run a bath, you'll know that makes all the difference. Testing the water is the obvious way to find out how clean the Severn is. But the only way to get that done regularly is to do as Alison and Melissa are attempting, get it official status as a place to swim. So we're hoping to get a couple of stretches in the River Severn designated as bathing water so that the water will be tested to see how clean it is or otherwise. Um, and then if there's any pollutants in it, the Environment Agency will investigate who's polluting the water and what with. On the other side of the Severn, we meet up with campaigners who say they've had enough. So this is where the, um, the sewer enters the river. Claire, Kate and Jamie are refusing to pay the part of their bill that covers taking the waste water away. And just I've, pay half of it for the fresh water. That's the supply in your tap. Supply in the taps, which, you know, I've got to be, you know, we're grateful for, really. But if they're still pumping the into the rivers, then I'm, I'm not happy about that. I'm not going to pay for it. I really feel like the only thing that's left for me to practice is to try and withhold a bit of the money, because that seems to be the only thing that they care about. Not worried that you might get a criminal record? Oh, no, 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 I'm not. <laughs> I'm going to disinfect my shoes when I get home. When everything works, Shrewsbury's sewage ends up here. This is a final settlement tank. The local water company points to environment agency data, which shows farming playing the most significant role in polluting the river. So what then do they make of the campaigners' refusal to pay their bills? I completely understand that there is a lot of passion when it comes to talking about rivers. People are fed up. Oh, oh yes. So, so people are really passionate about this, but so are we, right? So, well, fix it then. Oh, so, and, and we are. So, for example, uh, we are investing a hundred million pounds every year to reinforcing our sewer network. But the water companies were privatised decades ago. You've had a lot of time to sort this out. Why should we believe you now that you're going to actually fix this problem? So over, the, over that time, a lot of investment has gone into water quality. And so there have been improvements, but we do accept that people would like to see us do more. And so we are. That night, we joined a special meeting of Shrewsbury Council, called to discuss the state of the seven. Alison pushed her campaign for bathing status and bill refuser Claire delivered a call to action. It isn't just the water companies, it's also the farmers, it's also us members of the public. We're all going to have to work together. It's, no, it's pointless just blaming each other. With discussion of the seven over for the night, Alison and Melissa waded back into it. <laughs> the advantage of darkness is that you have no idea what it is you're swimming in. Jonah Fisher, BBC News, in Shrewsbury. Well, we can speak now to the actor Paul Whitehouse, who's been investigating the state of Britain's rivers for a new BBC documentary. Really nice to talk to you this morning, Paul. Just, I mean, obviously people will know you from Gone Fishing and, and will understand your passion and appreciation of the waterways, but, but how did you get involved in particular in looking at pollution? Well, I've always been concerned about the levels of pollution in our rivers and lakes because, uh, as you say, Rachel, I've been an angler all my life, so I've sort of seen it firsthand. And Bob Mortimer and I have been privileged and lucky enough to visit some of the most beautiful places in the country. And don't get me wrong, they are still beautiful. You know, a lot of our rivers are extraordinarily beautiful places, which makes it all the more heartbreaking to see what's been going on. And the, the pollution that we experience now is much more insidious than old-fashioned industrial pollution when a... Sorry, I'm crying here. Not with the pain at the rivers, although a bit, because it's so cold. Um, <clears throat> the, the levels of pollution we're seeing now are, are, are much more insidious. They are industrial pollution, runoff, and also the water companies are culpable in this. 
when I started doing this documentary, although I, I'm good friends with Fogel Sharkey, who's been the sort of mouthpiece of the campaign over recent years, it still astonishes me that water companies are legally allowed to dump raw sewage into our waterways at certain levels of storm overflows and high rainfall. And I, I find that such a, an anomaly and so annoying. You know, I'm so angry about it, really. But, and I can't believe it. I still can't believe that that is policy. Yeah. Plus, I, there, I, is I, also, there are also allegations that the water companies are also dumping raw sewage illegally. But that's just something I've heard, of course. Well, well let that anger keep you warmed up this morning, uh, Charlie, because I appreciate it, because it well, does look cold out there. Need something. And, and, and just, can, have you actually seen evidence of the impact of this kind of pollution on wildlife and on fish populations as you've been out fishing? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. A lot of our rivers are, are devastated. They're nothing like what they were even 20 years ago. And of course, they've been cleaned up in the sort of post-industrial era and we thought everything was rosy in the garden, but unfortunately that's not the case. Um, <clears throat> you know, your film actually um, touched on quite a few of the issues that, that we're concerned with on, on the River Seven, and we visit the River Wye, which is kind of sister river there. They both flow into the Bristol Channel in the same estuary. And the Wye, which is often voted, you know, the nation's favourite river, in places has been decimated. Um, you know, it's still got potential, and I don't want to paint a just a picture of doom and gloom because the technology and the possibility exists to clean up our rivers and I think now we're seeing across the country <clears throat> the will for of people to do something about it. There is a, a groundswell of support now to do something about this and the water companies have been sitting on their laurels for too long. They really have and it's time they were taken to task. Uh, Paul, I morning think, to you. you know, it's, uh... that is, Sorry, good morning. morning. I interrupt you there. It's Charlie here. Um, I'm just. That's you right, mentioned. Charlie, you uh, can interrupt me. I'll let you off. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Paul, you mentioned the why there, and as you say, anyone who knows that part of the world is a stunningly beautiful mm. place. And do you think, in some yeah. ways, the fact that you know people go there and they enjoy the place, almost unaware of what's going on in the the river system itself, and we're we're on a quick learning curve now about just what's happening yeah. uh, beneath, in and around. Mm. I, I, uh, well, as your film just highlighted, Charlie, it's, it is now, uh, they talk about it being a second tier issue. How can it be a second tier issue? It's water, you know, we, we can't exist without it. And we don't have an alternative. We can't go to another water company or, you know, another area for our water. And, and I, think, I think lockdown, in a way, focused everyone on how beautiful our countryside is, what's on our doorstep. And here we are, the very people, often, who are supposed to be safeguarding it, are the ones who are actually causing the problems. And yeah, it's got to change. It's quite simple. It's got to change. Can I just ask you, uh, Paul, you, you know, a lot of people absolutely adore gone fishing. And the, the two of you, <laughs> you and Bob Mortimer, doing your thing, and that whole programme is delightful. And it's a moment of kind of calmness and joy. But I, I dare say that when the two of you are out there, you're doing your thing, there must be moments when... You have those discussions too about what's going on, and you both presumably have been fishing for a long time. Yeah, absolutely, Charlie. We've, um, you know, we're. I, I mean, in a way, that's why I, I'm sort of fronting this documentary because I've been privileged enough to fish in our beautiful rivers and see them firsthand. So it would be sort of lax of me if I didn't, you know, put my head over the parapet. But we've had Fergal Sharkey on our show a couple of times. You know, our show is. A, celebration of the our rivers and the countryside but you know we can't just ignore what's going on and and Fergal has been really the kind of the spearhead of the current campaign to get the rec the, the water companies to acknowledge what's going on well, well let's so, see yeah, we, you know let's see a little bit of what? it now so we've got to hear a clip from the documentary where you find out the extent of the pollution in some of our rivers this is exactly what a sewage discharge actually looks like. So that's full on. <laughs> oh, is, Everything man. going into the river, all downstream. Oh and just look God. at the stir of that. Jeez, right the way it's frost, yeah. isn't it? Now. Yeah. It's liquid death. And that oh is God. underwater. So all these little bits that you're seeing floating around yeah. is human waste. And then mixed in with it, you've got the sanitary towels and obviously the waste and the wipes and everything. 
That is deeply unpleasant to behold. I mean, that is a, a turd's eye view. <laughs> <laughs> It's a good line, but it's all fairly grim as well, isn't it? I mean, in that, actually, what you realise is that there is some responsibility on the public as well to be very careful about what they're putting into the waste system. We do, yeah. Obviously, we have a, a personal responsibility. I mean, we, we can see right in front of us here, um, there's a evidence of human discharge, shall we say. Um, so, yeah, we, obviously, we have a personal responsibility, but the bigger picture is is how we manage our rivers and our waterways and our water supply. Um, it's interesting, that was the River Wharf in Ilkley, and that, where that sewage discharge was taking place, is, I think it was one of the first designated bathing areas in the country. I wouldn't want to swim in that, would you? No thanks. Well, curiously, I, no. I, I, Paul, I actually went for a swim in the Thames uh, a little while ago, just a one-off, I'm not a regular swimmer, and, and, and you do, yeah. Are you mad? Well, <laughs> yeah. Do some wonder. It where, does make where, you where, think. Do you, where do you go for your swim? In, it does make you think. And, it, you know, I mean, it's, it, it just seems extraordinary. I, I, I end up sort of sounding like a broken record, uh, for those of you old enough to know what a record is, because I just, I, I just can't comprehend the fact that we are discharging raw sewage into our waterways. And so I keep asking the same question of myself and everyone I've interviewed and met on the programme, how this can be allowed to happen? And I still haven't had a satisfactory answer. But yeah, it does make you scared and worried uh, about enjoying the rivers. So, well, well hats off to you, Charlie, for, for, <laughs> for swimming in the Thames. Well, yeah, maybe, maybe not a wise thing to do. Uh, Paul, lovely to chat with you this morning. Go get a cup of tea, warm up, yeah. and... Uh, Nice to speak to you. I can't get a cup of tea. I've got to have a heart assessment. They won't let me have a coffee or anything to eat. <laughs> oh, okay. All right, then. We get a health update as well. Uh, uh, yeah, I hope that goes all right. <laughs> all right. Well, well, thanks very much. Good to talk to you. I mean, bless him. He really wanted to get that message out there. Yeah. So, and every time thanks you, to him. Just as he said, every time you see those pictures uh, of what oh. is being put directly into the rivers, it just really does focus the mind. He's not a broken record. He's a broken live stream, which is kind of appropriate. Mm. And yeah, it sort of works. You can watch Paul Whitehouse, Our Troubled Rivers, this Sunday on BBC Two at 8 o'clock. And it will also be available on iPlayer as well. 8.29 right now, after breakfast on BBC One, Morning Live takes over and Kimberly and Gethin. Uh, they're already morning to you. Morning. morning to you.